now on Kiwi. All about games. It's Games Junkie Gerard Campbell from stuff.co.nz. Let's play tonight. Ah, Shun. Shun has always been very, uh, active. Even when he arrived, he was running away. But with his bow in his hand, Shun learned to concentrate. Mini Ninjas is one of the games we're looking at with Gerard Campbell, our game junkie from stuff.co.nz. Gerard Campbell, game junkie, come on in. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. How are you this morning? I am very, very well. Uh, lovely to um, have you along once again. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. Mini Ninjas, that, by the sounds of this one, it's, um, it's, uh, it sounds, it's, it's, is it a children's game as such? What do you, what do you make of this one? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's got a rating of 7 plus, so it's definitely geared towards the kids but you know you sort of have you know i mean ninjas are cool i mean they're you know dressed up in black gear and they're stealthy and they you know they do cool things but i think the really good thing with this one is um it's it's a ninja game for kids um you know you play firstly as a, as a little ninja called hero um and the back story is that there's a an evil ninja warrior who's come back you know and he's taken over the whole world and um, at the at the ninja school that you're going to, that hero's going to, the master sends out all his top ninjas, but they never come back. So his last resort is to send hero out, and he's got to defeat this um, evil warrior king. And it's just a really nice, cartoony um, looking game with some really good pl- gameplay. And I think it'll appeal to parents too, because you know a lot of the other ninja games that we've seen, you know, you've got Ninja Guy Den and those sorts of things that they're very bloody and they're very gory. You know, you can yeah. chop limbs off. But with with this one, the premise was that the evil warrior um, king um, turned forest animals into his soldiers. Right. So when you beat them up or you kill them, they disappear in a puff of smoke and they turn into frogs or squirrels or you know bears. So there's no you know there's it's there's no blood, there's no gore, and it's just a really you know, um, a good-looking thing game that I think will appeal to kids. So it's it's obviously very um, very kind of cutesy, and it's uh, uh, yeah. And, and and as you say, if there's no if there's no um, gore, does that still make it fun? Oh, look, yeah, it's fun, and it's you know the graphics are very cutesy too. They're almost a, I guess it's almost a cross graphic wise, almost sort of manga style with, I guess a bit of western style um, cartoonish. It's it's very sort of soft looking and and um yeah very cartoonish look and um you know it really adds to it i think the fact that you've still got this good combat and and there's no violent you know there's no gore there's no entrails and blood being left all over the place and i think um you know i think it's a clever move that they've taken such a cool thing as ninjas and have sort of targeted it towards uh, a more kids atmosphere but i mean that said um you know, I'm an adult, and I'm I'm having great fun playing with it. I think just mm. because it's very it's very accessible for kids too. It won't, you know, kids won't find it hard. It won't really stump them. And I guess that, you know, there's a couple of slightly scary pieces in it. But I mean, there's one stage where Hero has to go through um, a graveyard. Yeah, and he has to um, find he has to find shrines and temples along the way which give him powers. But even the ghosts look cartoony ghosts with you know look like sheets over them. So it's a very um, very tame sort of scary bits and also Hero has to rescue some friends so he can as the game progresses he can change into um, you know four or five other different characters his friends you know there's a big guy called Futo who's got a big hammer so he can smash things and there's another guy who can fire explosive arrows so it's just very um, very nice and very tidy you know kids ones but I guess as, as I was saying before it, it, it does get an award for me I guess because it's one of the very few games that um, has flatulence or farting as a central premise. <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah, it's it's really good. You know, there's some there's some very very big guards which are guarding gates. You can hear them moaning and groaning in the background, and then you hear them fart eventually. But there is one boss battle. Um, what is it about the fart, eh? That just you know, it always it always gets a laugh, no matter what. Oh, look, it does. It's it's one of those things that as soon as it hits, you've got a laugh. You know, my son who's playing it, he was just cracking up because there's a boss battle. 
that the boss you have to defeat him using his farts back at him. So you're having to run around and bounce the farts back to him, and then he has a machine gun fart. So it's yeah, it's it's very aimed at kids, which is I think is really good, you know, because I think for some of the action games that children's market um, seems to be left out a wee bit. So no, this, mm. I recommend this one for you know kids because it's non gory and it's just yeah, just a really cute, nice feel about it. Very, very cool. Well, um, another big one, uh, of course, just releasing today, and we have talked about it before, but you've now had a hands-on with Halo 3 ODST, Gerard. Yeah, yeah, that released today, and, um, you know, leading up until the summer, I've sort of had some hands-on time with um, the single player, a uh, very, very short time in the single player, and a wee bit of time on the firefight, which is the new multiplayer, four-player co-op uh, mode, uh, which... It's, I guess is most most been likened to um, to the horde mode in Gears of War 2, which is where um, you either do it by yourself or you have three other friends and you just take on increasing waves of enemies. So you're getting more and more enemies, and as they progress, they get harder and harder. Um, I've gone through the single player. The single player, as we've mentioned before, is, I guess, for two parts of the single player. The, you, for the bulk part, you play... An, an unvoiced character called the Rookie, who's a new member of this ODST Marine squad. Um, and he, as they drop into New Mombasa, which is one of the planets in the Hay universe, um, something goes wrong, he crash lands, he gets separated from the squad, now he has to try and regroup with the other five or six members of his team. And how he does this is he searches the city, and as he comes across um, items that you know his teammates have dropped, like it might be a helmet or it might be a weapon, the game flashes back and you then you take on the role of the soldier that that um belongs to and yeah. um it's a really interesting take i think on on the Halo universe because up until now everyone's been playing this sort of superhuman master chief who you know he's almost eight feet tall and he's super powered and he's um super strong um the ODS, odst marines although they're pretty formidable in terms of firepower um they are a lot more vulnerable Someone was um, saying to me uh, yesterday, and it was their criticism of the uh, original Halo 3, was that uh, the movements seem really slow. And I guess they, they have been used to other sort of first-person shooters um, where everything's sort of a little bit faster and, and frenetic. Um, and in particular, jumping. Jumping feels like you're yeah. on the moon. What, how, how, do you, how do you manage that? It's still, um, at, at its core, ODST is still the, the same Halo mechanic. Um, so jumping does still feel a wee bit sluggish, and you know your movement does feel a wee bit. But um, I mean, obviously that's on purpose, right? Yeah, well, I think it is. I mean, it's 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 right as opposed to a lot of the other first-person shooters. Movement does seem to be slightly slowed down. It does seem to be um, more measured. I wonder whether that's a Bungie's attempt that sort of trying to create uh, you know combat um, laden with a lot of gear and weapons and that sort of thing. Um, but it's interesting. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, ODST, the single player campaign mode, anyway. It's if you've played any of the Halo games before, um, you're going to be very, very familiar with the gameplay. Um, you know, you're going to face the same enemies. You're going to face the same um, similar sort of environments. Um, so they haven't really reinvented the wheel in terms of the single player. Um, but I think that perhaps the firefight will probably give the game its longevity long after you've finished the single player campaign. Right. I think that that's where. You know, the the chance of being able to play with three other mates on live um, or three other people, I think it's going to bring a new element into it. And I think um, you know, at this stage, you want to play the campaign. It's enjoyable, but it's um, it's very, you know, it, it's enjoyable. It's, it's, it's sort of very run-of-the-mill Halo stuff at the moment. Okay. Um, so, but, yeah. But gra- gra- graphically, once again, it's just it's looking absolutely amazing. I'm just looking at a little movie of it now. It's fantastic. Yeah, um... Graphically, I don't think um, it's a huge, vast improvement on, on Halo 3. Because um, Halo 3 is a couple of years old now. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and what I've understand, they've, they've tweaked the, the graphics a wee bit. So, I mean, they've obviously put a wee bit more effort into it and, and tweaked it up. But in terms of, you know, if you compare it to some of the really top, good-looking visual games, it's, it's certainly, I don't, don't think it'll be one of the best visual games of the year, but mm. certainly in terms of um, Halo 3, they've tweaked it a wee bit. So... But then they said it still has that, they've kept that Halo feel about it, so it, it, it unmistakably looks like Halo. Okay, excellent. Well, um, so it's, but it's worth, it's worth a bash, you reckon it's worth getting a hold of, uh, obviously if you're a Halo 3, a Halo fan? 
Oh, definitely. I think if you're a Halo fan, yeah, there's going to be a no-brainer that you're going to get it. And I think, um, I think the firefight mode will make it worth the purchase if you if you if you're an online gamer. Um, it also comes with you know it comes with two discs. There's one that has the single player campaign and the firefight, and then there is another disc that has all of the previous Halo Three multiplayer maps that have been released before. So if you don't have those already, you know, then you're getting pretty good value. But I think um, I. I don't want to make a judgment yet on whether it's good value for if you're just a campaign player. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of if you're a multiplayer, if you like online stuff, then yeah, certainly the firefight's going to be a really big draw card for you. Excellent. Well, uh, your blog is up at stuff.co.nz, the Game Junkie blog under the technology section. You're also on Twitter as well. People can have a conversation with you there. Game Junkie NZ. Gerard Campbell, thanks for looking at Mini Ninjas and Halo uh, ODST. Not a problem. Have a good day.